a rest that would come because of the harshness of this beginning of decade and this rest shall come to those who have suffered those who have been treated unjustly those who the enemy has deceived there is a rest that is coming but God says that is not the only rest for I shall rest my case and as the righteous judge who some who call upon my name think that I've ignored the injustice the corruption the evil the things that have been done to this nation through your media through your politics your government and to the people some think that I have ignored and I am not doing anything to bring about justice yet this is the time that I rest my case for I am the lawgiver I am the judge and I am the king therefore as I rest my case watch what begins to take place many things undercover to the light and it will not just be investigations that will lead to nothing but there will be investigations that will lead to justice I will pull back the curtains and I will show as I rest my case those who are guilty others shall find mercy and as this takes place in your land know that this is the hour and the time that great disruptions and interruptions shall come and they shall say what is this with the satellite what is the disruption that is taking place and so men will look up to a satellite but it'll be more than just that it will be a disruption in the heavenlies by my hand that will affect your earth and will affect your nation watch as acceleration takes place many things now will be accelerated because as I rest my hand in my case upon this nation you will begin to see healing flow as it was in the days of Hezekiah not only was it a king who was healed but the nation and so I speak there are wounds that have happened within the very heart and soul of 45 yet there is a moving of my hand upon him and I am taking not only the anointing that I've placed upon him but I'm placing it upon others and they will be raised up too in this season that I've rested my case that a new leadership shall arise because it is part of healing a nation that was divided that was wounded that was confused deceived and harshness abound on every side but watch very closely for the media that you see today shall not be what you will see in the time that is coming of rest there will be sold some will fold the networks others will be rebranded and a new voices shall arise social media they will be bought out exposed as you see with Twitter it shall begin to come like a fury and it will flood down on other social media outlets and I will reveal as I rest my case how they too were part of the injustice and the corruption and then it will not go away I told you my thumb my finger is driving a thumb drive that's connected to a laptop and God says I will open it up even greater for the world to see
and as my justice comes there will be a put it back as I've said before they shall pray in their schools unto me they will open the scriptures and teach creation and they will teach Jesus Christ yes in your public schools and there will be a restoring of the cross in the public places and even the commandments shall be reverence and reverent again in the public places this is the rest as I rest my case says the living God come on lift up your hands unto him worship him worship him God rest your case now concerning every precious person in the sound of my voice reset reset and redo I feel like God right now listen to me is taking his hand and he's putting it upon the hearts of everyone in the sound of my voice and he did it with Hezekiah he absolutely turned the sundial back ten spaces and gave him a redo and I feel like not only is God doing a redo in all the things that we've been facing politically come on all of this that we've been facing but there's a redo for you and if you will open your heart up to the voice of the Lord today God's going to reset and redo some things in your life. Come on, maybe some of you, you had a terrible, terrible season. Maybe some of you, you have been suffering with sickness, infirmity, pain. And God is just like taking his hand right now. And he is literally bringing a redo, a reset for a whole new season that is coming to your life. Come on, just put your hand on your heart as it would be as God reaching down, touching your body, touching your soul touching your spirit touching your mind come on touching your life touching your finances touching everything that has been entrusted to you and God there is a divine reset there is a divine redo father it is a new season that I pronounce from your throne upon the people that you are resetting redoing bringing new again and I thank you I thank you I thank you that their body responds to the healing touch their soul responds to refreshing and blessing come on their body responds to strength their hands are filled with blessings overflowing thank you God for touching the people thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you now let God know that you've come into agreement say Lord I receive your reset your re re redo I receive that divine touch now as you're bringing me greater into the manifestation of your goodness and all the things that Jesus paid for by his blood I receive the benefits in my life my body and all that's been entrusted to me I live under the blessing of my blood covenant with you almighty God through Jesus' mighty blood thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord now just receive just receive just receive thank you Lord we worship you we worship you we worship you thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. How many believe God's such a good God? <laughs> Man, God is really releasing His touch. I think you ought to just put your hand back on your heart again and say, Lord, I receive that. I receive that touch. Amen. Amen. All right, Mama, anything you have? Praise God. I like how he's resting his case. Amen. Isn't that good? 
Praise God. Well, why don't you do this? Why don't you greet one another? And here's what I want you to say. Say, I bet I know out of the four seasons. I'm not talking about the rock group. Was that a rock group even? No, they weren't a rock group, but they were a music group. We're not talking about the music group. Wasn't that a four seasons? Oh, yeah, that's what it was. Uh, anyway, say, out of the four seasons, you know, winter, spring, summer, or fall. Say, I bet I know which one is your favorite. See how close you come. All right? Greet one another. Amen. Share the love of God. We greet you, those of you that are watching. So, Psalm 65, verse 11. Are you ready? We're going to look at it out of two translations so that you get uh, a real grasp on what, what God is saying. And I want you to do that now. Those of you that are watching, you know, get a pen out, get some notes. Come on, let's, let's go on a ride together. And, uh, you know, put your seat in its upright position. Put your tray table out. And let's get ready to eat. Are you ready? Okay. Now, here's the deal. Psalm 65, verse 11. We'll look at the King James Version. It says that God crowns. Notice it's not something that we're trying to force, not something that we're trying to make up. But God crowns. Now, underline that word. That word crown literally is translated. You could see it like this. Thou surrounds. You preserve, you protect the year. So how many would like your year to be surrounded? How many would like your year to be protected and preserved by God with his, notice what's attached to his surrounding. What's attached to his protection and preservation? With his goodness. So God's going to surround us, protect us, preserve us this year. It's a year of goodness and thy paths will drop fatness. Now let's go to the next uh, New Living Translation. I want to kind of look at it in, in another, because this, this translation, I like what's connected to it because of what people have been through. It says, you surround, you protect, you preserve the year. Watch this. This is a year of a bountiful harvest. Someone say, I'll receive that. <laughs> now, watch this. Even, or I like to put the word in, because... The pathways have been hard. How many have had a few hard ways? It shall overflow with abundance. So there's going to be rewards for the harsh pathways or the harsh season that we've been in, in the year of goodness. Someone say year of goodness. Yes. Now I want to look at Psalm 34. We're going to review for just a second. And I want you to look at what verse 8 says in Psalm 34. Verse 8 is very, very strategic verse because it says, taste and see. Well, how do you taste and see that the Lord is good? Well, the word taste means to perceive. And one of the ways that you perceive or know that God is good is by experience, but also going back and looking at what God did through Scripture and what God said about himself. So if you're going to have a year of goodness, you have to get your perception, your perspective, and watch this, your words right. Okay, keep your mouth right. Don't just say, well, I've heard this before. Oh, yeah, we'll see. Well, you've just excluded yourself. Go listen to a different message because mine's the word of the Lord. <laughs> Taste and see. Yeah, yeah it is because I don't just see God to make something up. Taste and see. And I've walked with God too long to not know when he's speaking. Not know when he's not, you know, I know when he's speaking. Taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts him. Now drop down to verse 12. Watch this. How do you come into a year of goodness? It, it gives you this. What man in this room and those of you that are watching, how, how many of you desire a good life? How many of you long to love many days and, and, and or longer life and to see good in your year of goodness. How many of you, that's you, raise your hand. Those of you by the camera, come on. Right there in your living room, raise your hand. Now watch, it gives you the answer how to do it. It has to do with your mouth. And I'm going to talk about that today, how important your mouth is. It says, keep your tongue from evil. Well, you know what the Bible calls an, uh, unbelief? The kind that is rebelliously refusing to believe what God says, it calls an evil heart. Okay? So you keep your tongue from evil by not speaking a bunch of negativity, unbelief. Oh, this is taking so long. I can't take anymore. I'm growing so tired. Most people that say that, you are inundated with the news. 
You, you, you have been, your soul is filled with all the propaganda, fake news and lies. That's why you say it. You know why? I'm no different than you. I'm a human being. I'm a person that's in the same fight. But you know why I have never said that out of my mouth? Because I don't listen to that stuff. And I put myself before the throne of Almighty God. And I've tasted his perception, his perspective. And keep your leaps from speaking guile. All right, now, let's go on. I want you to see something. Look at Exodus chapter 3. This is very important as you think about your attitude, as you think about your words in the year of goodness. Because the children of Israel are wandering in the wilderness 40 years. And God kept them safe. And he showed his goodness and he provided for them. He promised them a land, watch this, flowing with milk and honey, which speaks of his abundant goodness and his provision. Look at Exodus 3, verse 8. And God says, I, come, I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Now, that was a socialistic, uh, Marxist-type government that is paralleled today in a lot that we're seeing. And notice it was God that delivered him from that. For the first time in the history of our nation, we've never seen such a socialistic uh, and make everything government dependent, right? Government's supposed to work for you. You're not supposed to sit there and have to, you know, work for the government. They're supposed to represent you and work for you. So I've come to deliver you out of the socialistic agenda and to bring you up to a land. What kind of land did God say? A good land. And the reason why God could say that it would be a good land, because he himself prepared it for him, he himself was going to be there. And you cannot have a good land absent of the good God. So he said, I brought you up to a good land and a large, and watch this, flows with what? Milk and honey. Why milk and honey? Milk, you think about a woman who, who breastfeeds her child. Well, that, that milk is nourishment. That milk is provision. So God's saying, look, it's going to be so good. I'm going to show you that I'm going to provide for you just like, uh, you know, with the example of milk. I am going to literally provide for you. And not only am I going to provide for you, but baby, it's going to be sweet as honey. That was God's promise. So they had a prophetic word. Man, it is going to be amazing. It's going to be a land. Come on, I'm going to make America great again. I'm going to raise it up to be great. It's going to flow with milk and honey. It's not always going to be this weird um, stuff with, with, with the economy and inflation. Man, it's going to be sweet. I'm going to bring you into rest because of the harshness. But here's the problem. The problem was Israel did not realize that there was something connected to their milk and their honey, honey. It was called giants. And with those giants were giant problems, and they were going to have to have a moment to fight for their promise. Let's fast forward to today. People love hearing, oh, I'm going to bring you into rest. Oh, I'm going to reset. And what did God say earlier in prophecy? I'm going to rest my case. Oh, that's great. But they don't like the fact that there's been some giant problems called corruption deep state evil it's going to be a good land it's going to flow with milk and honey so he shares the prophecy with them and then he says to them ah one other thing you're going to have to face some giants you're going to have to fight for your nation some people don't want to fight for their nation today they don't want a pastor to be speaking like this behind a pulpit so they, they would rather the fake news and everybody else be your source of information but God says uh, there's going to be giants, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and Jebushites, <laughs> and a few Bidenites. And so this was part of their giants that they were going to have to face. How many got that? Let me see the scripture. But on September 5th of 2019, God prophesied and he said, hey, listen, you're coming into a decade and it will be called the decade of Israel. And he said, a prophetic narrative that will play out. This was way before people started coming up with prophetic narratives. He said, the prophetic narrative would be like in the days between Egypt and Israel. And I will put a difference. And he said, there will be plagues, which we had. How many remember? Come on. And he, and he said, but I will bring you into rest. So notice something. Joshua 1, verse 13 
part of it is people get their eyes so much on the giants. They get their eyes upon how big the giants are and what the report is coming out of the promised land. Right? We hear, you know, people say, hey, America's going to going to recover. We're going to see this nation. There's a global freedom coming if you're watching in a, another nation. And, and people automatically want to go to the doom and gloom or, hey, let's just get out of here because we can't figure out or it doesn't look like, you know, God's going to do anything good because, man, it is so evil out there. And they ignore, and I told you this before, Matthew 24, people always quote the earthquakes and the wars and the rumors of wars and the love of many growing, uh, you know, cold and lawlessness increasing. They always quote those signs. I hear it all the time in Matthew 24. But Jesus emphatically said, go back and read Matthew 24. He said, when you see those things, the end is not yet. And he tells them when the end will come, there has to be a message. There has to be an interjection of God's goodness. And it says the gospel, Matthew 24, 14, the good news shall be preached, demonstrated, witnessed, and then the end will come. And so God already told us ahead of time, we are coming into rest. And look at Joshua 1, verse 13. This was the same promise that God gave to the children of Israel. Remember the word. So he's trying to remind them. Okay? Remember the word. The servant of the Lord commanded you. So God gave you a prophecy. Remember the words from 2018, 2019. I will give you rest. That's the same promise that he told Joshua. Had to remind the people, God said, I'm going to give you rest. The problem was the people could only see the giants. Same way today. It's amazing to me how you get people that that I hear, they say, oh, don't get people's hopes up. Excuse me. I'm only going off of what God said. God said, I will give you rest. He meant it. Now look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Because their attitude got in the way, because their mouth got in the way, even though God promised it would be a land flowing with milk and honey, here's here's the thing. They never got to enter into it because of their bad attitude. (laughs) They doubted God. They they, began to complain all the time. And look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Let us therefore... Fear, in other words, reverence, lest or unless a promise being left us of entering into his rest that we should come short of it. Listen, we are in right now the fight of our life for this country to fulfill what God has said. It is not the time to be quiet. It's not the time to be afraid. It's not the time to get in unbelief. It's not time to avoid the topics that are infiltrating our culture and the things that are affecting our nation through our corrupt government. It is not the time to be quiet. It is the time to speak up and to hold God to what He said. And you got to remember, out of 12 spies that went into this promised land flowing with milk and honey, only two, two came back and said, listen to me, we are going to talk absolute politics we are going to absolutely say there are giants but maybe we are going to take them all out we are going to fight and we will win we are going to be about god and we're going to be about country we are going to take the land and there were 10 that spoke up oh you should be quiet behind your pulpits oh you shouldn't say anything we we we, can i ask you a question how many of you are christians in here okay Keep your hand up because I'm going to nail you real good. Look at your one hand. You are salt and you are light. Guess what salt does? Salt brings preservations to open wounds. There is a lot of open wounds in our nation. Our, our, the soul of this nation has been wounded through woke, through cultural uh, conflict and confusion. Come on. You are the salt. You are to take The salt of the word of God, the truth of God's word, the truth of morality, and whether it hurts baby or not, you apply it. You speak up. You live it. So that it brings preservation and healing. It's part of the healing of a nation. You are, look at your other hand, as a Christian, you are light. 
You know what a light is supposed to do? Come on, keep reading it. A light is not supposed to put it underneath the bushel and hide it away and nobody knows that you're a Christian. Nobody, nobody ever hears a, a, a preacher behind a pulpit ever talk politically. Come on, that's, that's what Jesus said. That means you take your light, come on preacher, come on Christian, and you put it under a bushel. How do you overcome darkness? Through the light. And how do you do it? You let the light shine. You speak up. You let the light shine. Come on. Don't be quiet and silent. Okay? Too many Christian centers are under the bush Christian centers. Too many Christians and preachers living underneath the bushel. Got to hide it because they don't want to, you know... Listen to me. Every one of you needs to read a book by Eric Metaxas called The Letter to the American Church. Brenda's reading it, and she's been telling me. And listen, there was a man named Bonhoeffer. He was a German preacher who spoke up in Nazi Germany. He said to the preachers, if we don't start equipping our congregations, this man Hitler is going to take over our land, and he is going to absolutely kill Christians and Jews alike. They laughed at him. They wanted him. Quit mixing religion with politics. And you know what? They didn't listen to him. And the very thing that he said happened to their country and to innocent people by the millions. And Eric Metaxas warns and says, Christian preacher, come on. If this is your, your take to just be quiet, you don't know and understand what is at stake. We aren't just fighting against flesh and blood. We are fighting against very evil spirits, giants that want to take your freedom and your country away from you. And every pastor that's a coward that will not preach behind their pulpits, you'll think twice if they come and take yours away from you because you didn't speak up. Now, I want to show you this is powerful. So they fell short of it. I'm not going to let this country fall short of the, the, the rest that God promised. We're going to keep reminding them. Now I want you to go because Numbers chapter 20 is very, very significant. And this is where we're going to get into the meat of some things that I really want to share with you. This, this Holy Spirit, help me to really teach this to the people. So when you look at Numbers chapter 20, the people could only see giants. That's how some people are today. They don't want to be part of the fight. They don't want to connect to the word of the Lord that God says, hey, I'm going to release global freedom. I'm going to raise up this country to be greater again. So Moses now leads the people. And in Numbers chapter 20, you see something very, very significant begin to take place. Look at verse 3. And the people contended with Moses. And so they got into complaining. And they spoke saying, watch what their words were. If we had only died when our brethren died before the Lord, why have you brought up the assembly of the Lord into the wilderness that we and animals should die here? Their perspective was completely off. That's where some people are. God gave them a prophecy through Aaron the prophet and Moses the prophet and said there is a land. There is a better Israel. There is a better America. There is a better earth that's coming. That it'll flow with milk and honey. And they could not absolutely agree with the prophecy. They kept attacking the prophecy. They kept attacking the prophet. And they didn't heed to what God said. That's why I will never back up from what God has said. Now, watch what happens. And why have you made us come up out of the land of Egypt? In other words, they were wanting to go back and literally be under bondage. They were slaves. They were, they were under harsh, harsh conditions. Far worse probably than the wilderness. You made us come out of here and watch this. You brought us to this evil place. In other words, so, like some today can only see evil. Negative. What the government's doing. What the deep state is doing. What the media is reporting. They cannot see the promise connected to this madness. Are you here? 
Is it not a place of grain or figs? Is it not a place of grain or figs, vines, pomegranates? And there's no water to drink. Now watch this. It's vital to note in these verses that the words of the people kept the nation of Israel bound in a holding pattern rather than the national fulfillment of prophetic words that God spoke. I believe we are being greatly tested by God. And then once God opens the Red Sea, and drowns and deals with the socialistic government in the Red Sea, they all celebrate. And three days later now, they are led in the wilderness, and they are complaining about water. Now, this verse of passage of Scripture I'm going to show you is the second time that they lusted and, and complained about water, and, and Moses had to bring water out of a rock. But I want to show you how it's important to watch our words and hold on to the word of the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 1, all right? I just showed you Numbers 20. We're going to go back there in a moment. But I want you to see that their attitude, their unbelief, their blaming of their leaders, them wanting to accept the condition of Egypt that was trying to re-enslave them, they would rather have that, and all they could look at was evil, and what they didn't realize is they were prolonging their journey. And I read it when I, when I read those comments on social media, friend, come on. Something in my spirit, I, I stretch my hands towards you and I pray. Because if you are saying those kind of things, you can affect the national release of a nation in bondage. This is very serious. This is why... Why do you think they've attacked us preachers that are taking a stand for God and country? Why do you think that they have taken a crack at your social media accounts if you speak the truth? Why do you think they attacked the prophets of the Lord? Because the enemy wants you to do all of these things so that you start running your mouth and coming into agreement with its agenda so that he can prolong the rest that God has promised. Listen to me. I'm telling you the truth. So when people write, oh, I can't take it any longer, I prophesy to you. Don't say that. Come on, every week I have to get on a national international program. And I have to bring the word of the Lord. And I have to listen to news clips that I've never heard in my life. And I have to keep the mindset and the word of the Lord on my mouth. And don't alter. If I can do it, you can do it too. And I have a great responsibility because God's words are in my mouth. So there's no excuse for you. Don't do it. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Look at verses 2 through 3. There are 11 days journey, 11 day journey, 11 days of a journey. And instead, it was 40 stinking years. Why? Not because of God. Not because of the prophets, not because of the prophetic words, but because a nation could not come into agreement with what God said. Instead, they attacked the ones that spoke it, prophets, preachers, Christian, patriots who are standing. And it took them 40 years. You have a choice. Now, personally... God's been speaking a lot to me. This stuff is about to be wrapped up. But here's the thing. Let's not prolong it. We are in a very strategic place right now. Don't prolong it. Now, God promised, look at Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 7. And here's the thing. They always <laughs> saw the evil. They couldn't see the goodness of God. Brenda showed you this, Pastor Brenda, at the offering. Watch what it says. For the Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hands. So notice they were even blessed in the wilderness. Their shoes never wore out. Their clothes never wore out. 
Come on, man. Women, you never had to go shop for new shoes or clothes, man. They never hungered. They never absolutely lacked for anything. Watch this. For 40 years, I blessed you. And I knew you're trudging through the wilderness. 40 years. It wasn't supposed to be. But nevertheless, you lacked nothing. And can I tell you something? In the end of the day of high gas prices, inflation, I'm here to tell you when this thing is wrapped up, you're going to look back and you're going to say, wow, it was a wilderness, all right. It was tough. But I'm going to tell you, God, thank you because I didn't lack for nothing. That's why I never, when I go to the pump, Ever complain about the gas price. You know what I do? Oh, I prophesy to it. I've had people look at me like, who the Hades are you? And I'm sitting here, man, I prophesy to you, you go down, down, down. You stay down. I rejoice in the Lord God who provides all my needs. And then I pray for you and my partners. And Father, I thank you for every partner that is filling their gas tank. I thank you that you provide for them. Thank you for every Lord of Host Church e-member, congregational member, Lord God, OVM partner. I thank you you provide for them. Right there, yes, right there. Yes, on camera when they're looking at you. What's that dude doing? Lifting my hands, rejoicing to God. Because I don't care how hard it is. You will see that you will lack for nothing. Some trust in horses. Some trust in rhinos. Some trust in donkeys. But I'm going to trust in the name of the Lord my God. for nothing I'm not complaining for nothing glory be to God amen look at Deuteronomy 8 16 and then we're going to get into some good stuff in the remaining time we have I mean this is good already but we're going to get into some really good stuff all right Deuteronomy 8 16 for watch this for they all right it says here 8 16 God fed you in the wilderness with manna which thy fathers knew not. So that was the heavenly bread that they gathered every day. And God said, to bring about humility, that I might humble you and to prove you. Deuteronomy 8, 16. To do the good at the latter end. Is that the right verse? Okay. They'll put it up. Notice something. So how is this harshness going to end up? God already told us before it became harsh. That's how you know by prophecy. 2018, 2019. So take your rapture crapture stuff and put it on the shelf. Yes, he's coming. But some of the stuff that people are saying is crap. I can't believe he just said that. I said it and I'll say it again if you keep looking at me that way. Because when I go before his throne, he tells me he's coming, but he keeps reminding me, there is coming glorious days, Hank. It is in process. All right, let's wrap it up with Numbers 20. Let's go back there. Let's look at what happened again. Numbers 20. Now, this was, you're going to see in the story, this was the second time that the children of Israel in 40 years got upset because they didn't have any water. All right? And it's the second time that a rock was involved. Now, the people complained against Moses. We saw that, right? You, you know, and, and everything Egypt to, to this evil place. All we see is evil. Verse 5. Look at verse 6. So, Moses and Aaron did something about it. Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly to the door of the tabernacle of meeting. And they fell on their face. Some of you need to fall on your face before God. Repent of your bad words, your negativity, your doubting of his prophets and his prophecies. And what he has said about your future and the future of this earth and America right now. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. Now watch this. Verse 7 and 8. Pay attention to the words. 
And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, What? Take the rod. What rod? Not rod parsley. <laughs> it was a different rod. Take the rod. So, if I said, get in the car, you're not going to go out in the parking lot. Which car, honey? There's a specific car. Take the rod. And you and your brother Aaron, gather the congregation. And what was the instruction? Speak to this rock. Speak to the rock. And before their eyes, it will yield as water. And thus shall you bring water from out of that rock and give drink to the congregation and their animals. Now, go back up and look. Take the rod. What rod do you think that he was referring to? Whose rod? It was Aaron's rod. It was not Moses' rod. There were two rods. Moses had his rod, and Aaron had his rod. Amen? Moses' rod was more of a hot rod. But Aaron's was a little cooler. But they had two rods. And you can see that through the plagues. Moses, take your rod. Aaron, take your rod. And everybody knows that they always walked with walking sticks. I'm going to prove it to you. Go to Exodus chapter 4. Watch what happens. And so the Down. 